man, that's beautiful. I want to be ready when he calls my name. I want to be ready. Grace and peace to you be multiplied, my brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. I want to greet you in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior, in the name of Jesus the Christ, in the name of the Rose of Sharon, in the name of the bright and morning star, in the name of the name according to the scriptures that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow. Good morning and all of that. Welcome to our, our uh, 25th Sunday after Pentecost. Man, it, time is flying. If I was to talk to my wife, Karen, she would say to me, Christmas is here. And she would be decorating, and she is already, and all of that sort of stuff, and it's only November the 14th. But we're excited about what God is doing in and through us here at Trinity United Methodist Church. This is our, our Sunday morning worship time, and so let's worship. I have a couple of announcements that are in order that I'd like to share with you. Um, we have uh, our upcoming Bible conversation, which will uh, take place uh, next week. It'll take place, and we're, we're studying this brand new lesson that we've been talking about, and it's called uh, The Promises of Christ, written by a United Methodist clergy person, and, and he is talking through the new, uh, the, the, the Ten Commandments, and he's bringing them forward from the ancient times to the first century church, and then he brings them to the 21st century. And man, we're having a good time. So we invite you to come and be part of that Bible conversation. Our next conversation will take place on Wednesday, the 16th of, of, of November. And we're inviting you to come be part of that study. Amen. So we also have uh, uh, Brenda Lee in her choir. She's asking that you will come and take part in a Christmas choir. If you love the saying, and I know that, that you love to sing. We have a ton of hymns. Come be part of that Christmas choir. She's looking forward to that happening right here uh, Sunday after worship, about 30 minutes after Sunday worship. Come be part of that. And so I believe the next time that you will join in with that Christmas choir would be the 21st of November. Amen? Also, uh, we're going to be, uh, the United Methodist women are going to meet here on uh, the, I believe this will be Tuesday, November 16th, in person. So if you're a United Methodist woman and you'd like to meet in person here at Trinity at 10 a.m. on next Tuesday, the 16th. Amen? This coming Tuesday, the 16th. Also, um, just for a uh, little bit of charge conference information, we had charge conference back on November the 4th. And if you did not receive some of the paperwork that is uh, privileged to you as a member of Trinity United Methodist Church, we have copies here. We've also made them available online. So if you go to the previous news blast, you can find uh, the, the copies of the information that we voted on for charge conference. It should be in the hands of every member of Trinity United Methodist. That is your privilege and your pleasure. We don't do stuff in a corner. We want you to know exactly what we're doing here at Trinity. Amen? So those are all the announcements that I have. If you have an announcement that you want us to uh, share, hit us up here at Trinity United Methodist Church in King George. You can uh, hit us at our phone number here is 540-775-4501. Or you can email us at trinitykg at verizon.net. Or you can hit me up at Kevin Elmore at VAUMC.org and connect with us and let us know what's happening in and through your life. Amen? Please join with me, my sisters and brothers in Christ, as we share in our call to worship. Our call to worship is connected with our scriptures today. Our scripture will come from Mark's gospel in chapter 13 and verses 1 through 8. And so the call to worship follows that theme. Not one stone will be left on stone. We worship our rock and our savior, our salvation. Beware that no one leads you astray. We worship our source of wisdom and truth. When all seems lost, this is just the beginning of birth pangs. We are here to worship 
the word that endures and the hope that is born among us. Amen. Let us pray, my sisters and brothers in Christ. The gracious and all-wise God, to you we give glory, dominion, power, now and forevermore. We praise you for this time-space continuum that you've placed us in. As we've gathered this morning to worship, we pray that you would, by your spirit and power, gather us together in one heart and one mind. We pray that your Holy Spirit would unite our hearts and our minds together, that we might make a melodious sound as we pray, as we sing, as we worship together, as we proclaim the Word of God. We pray that your Spirit would unite us together so that our, our worship might come up before you as a sweet smell and aroma. And then, God, will you bless us? Bless us that we might be able to uh, say to the world around us, that we have a God who loves us more than our hearts could ever imagine, more than our minds could ever see. We love you, we praise you, and give you glory. This is our prayer in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Our opening hymn, My Sisters and Brothers in Christ, comes from uh, an old favorite of mine. As a matter of fact, it was a theme song of the late J. Vernon McGee. And his, his How Firm a Foundation. What a great song. Will you join with me? It's printed here in our order of worship, hymn number 529. We're going to be singing uh, verses. We're going to be sharing in verses 1, 3, and 4. Amen. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. We get to share each week with uh, a message for our young people. And I love being able to share with the young people because we, we have a tendency sometimes to forget you guys. And so I'm glad that we here at Trinity have not forgotten our young people. And so we, we want to talk today um, real quick from uh, the topic, first of all, that uh, we, we've chosen do not be alarmed. Do not be alarmed. And so do not be alarmed takes the whole idea of, of when I looked up the word alarm, it, it says to be afraid or to be scared or fearful. And so we'll find out in these verses here that we're sharing from Mark's gospel, a gospel according to Mark, um, in, in chapter 13 and verses 1 through 8, that Jesus says to his followers, to his disciples, do not be alarmed. Do not be alarmed. And so we want to uh, uh, talk from that topic. Here are the scriptures for us this morning. As Jesus was leaving the temple, one of his disciples said to him, Look, teacher, what massive stones, what a magnificent building. Do you see all of these great buildings, Jesus replied? Not one stone will be left on another. Every one of them would be thrown down. As Jesus was sitting on the Mountain of Olives opposite the temple, 
Peter, James, and John, and Andrew ask him privately, tell us, when will these things happen? And what will be the signs that they are going to, all going to be fulfilled? Jesus said to them, watch out that no one deceives you. Many will come in my name, claiming I am he, and will deceive many. When you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Nation will rise up against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places and famines. There, these are the beginning of birth pains. This is the word of God for the young people of God. Thanks be to God. So for a few minutes, my young brothers and sisters in Christ, I want to talk from the topic, uh, do not be alarmed. Let's pray. Gracious God, uh, thank you for this time we can share together. We pray that you would uh, speak to our hearts this morning, that we might be able to speak. Speak to our hearts this morning that we might be able to uh, hear from you through your word. We pray now that you would give us insight and wisdom. Uh, give us the ability to uh, apply your word in everyday lives, in everyday situations. Lord, we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Do not be alarmed. So the scripture passage from Mark today, uh, we find uh, Jesus' boys, I call them Jesus' boys, his disciples, uh, they always hung out with them. You know how you have friends you're always hanging out with, and so they become part of your boys. And so we find Jesus and his boys, and, and his boys, the, the disciples are admiring this big structure, this, this massive uh, temple, if you will. And we know that the temple was built by uh, by uh, the Herods, Herod the Great and, and his son, uh, Herod Antipas. They built the temple. And so the temple was massive, had some stones that were as long as 35 feet long and 25 feet high. And so the disciples was admiring the building. Have you ever seen a building like that? Ever been to, to the city, Washington, D.C., Richmond or somewhere, and you look up New York and the building is like, wow. How in the world did they do that? Sort of that idea. And so the disciples were, were looking at the building in, in, in awe. And Jesus responded to them. And, and I think his comments must have frightened them. And I know that they did. That's why he said to them, don't be alarmed. Do not be alarmed. But what the disciples didn't understand was that the, the building, the structures were, were temporary. All of the things that we see, my sisters and brothers in Christ, are temporary. It is the stuff that we cannot see that is eternal. Those are the things that we, we should be paying attention to. Oh, I, I believe that we ought to uh, look at cars and our homes and toys and our video games and appreciate them. But we cannot put our hope and trust in things that we see. And here is what Jesus says. He reminds our follow, his followers and us that we must put our hope and trust in God's kingdom. We say this in our prayer each Sunday. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, your kingdom come. And so we, we ought to be trusting, according to Jesus, we ought to be trusting in God's kingdom and not in the material things that we see with our eyes. Does it sound scary to you when he said, uh, not one of these stones will be left on another? Then he goes into this, this discourse, this, this discussion where he says, there are going to be earthquakes and there are going to be wars, and there are going to be rumors of wars, and there are going to be all sorts of destruction, both man-made and natural. And he, he says this, and the disciples must have feared because he says to them, do not fear that the end has not come. But he says to them and to us, trust God. Trust God because God is eternal. Trust God because Jesus is eternal. And Jesus shows them, the source of, of, of their hope. It is in him. And he says that, and he reminds them, and he reminds us to do not be afraid, to trust in him, to trust in God. 
as we uh, close this out and we, we are remind ourselves this morning, we'll remind ourselves to, to do not be afraid by praying the Lord's Prayer. And Jesus helps us in them by saying this. Let's pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us, our Father, not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Do not be alarmed. If you will join with me, my sisters and brothers in Christ, as we read uh, God's word today. God's word is found in Mark's gospel in chapter uh, 13 and verses 1 through 8. So last week when we left off, of, we, we, we ended up in uh, chapter 12 and verse 44 in the widow's mites. And so we, we understood that the uh, widow, uh, the, the story of the widow's mite was the end of Jesus's public ministry. And so today we find uh, Jesus uh, talking with his disciples and, and giving them some, some information and, and giving them, uh, using a teachable moment, if you will. And this comes from Mark's gospel. And, and you can also find this story, we can find this same story or similar story in the gospel of Matthew chapters 24 and 25 and also in the gospel according to St. Luke uh, somewhere around uh, chapter 15. All right. So here's what it says for us today. As Jesus was leaving the temple, one of his disciples said to him, look, teacher, what massive stones, what magnificent building. Jesus said, do you see this great building? Not one stone will be left on another. Everyone will be thrown down. As Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter, James, John, and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us, when will these things happen? And what will be the signs that they are all about to be fulfilled? And Jesus said to them, Watch out that no one deceives you. Many will come in my name, claiming I am he, and will deceive many. When you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. Such things must happen. But the end is still to come. Nation will rise up against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places and famines. These are the beginning of birth pangs. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. If you will join with me, my sisters and brothers in Christ in hymn number uh, five. 12 as we sing stand by me verses 1 3 and 4 amen
Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. For a few minutes, my sisters and brothers in Christ, I want to talk from the topic, do not be alarmed. Do not be alarmed. Let us pray. Gracious God, you uh, have given us your word this morning from the gospel according to Mark. As we uh, view this word through the lenses of Mark's writing and through the eyes of Jesus, we pray that you would speak to our hearts today. Speak, Lord, for your servants are listening. Give us insight and wisdom that we might be able to live out our word, live out your word in these times. We're in treacherous times, Lord, and, and so we're asking for your intervening, for your help. We live in the midst of challenges all around us, but we're confident in this one thing. We, we shall be uh, all right. We shall come out on the other side because of who our God is. According to Mark, there is no one like Jesus. There is no one that has ever been like you, and there none uh, shall ever come after you. Lord, we love you. We praise you for this time that you've given to us. Allow your spirit to draw us closer to you that we might worship. Lord, we bless your holy name. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Do not be alarmed. Has anyone ever said to you, have anyone ever run up to you and, and said, uh, do not be alarmed? Typically, they're, they're usually rushing, coming toward us with their hands raised to, to calm us down from uh, some unexpected news. What do we do with the information that we receive from people when they, they say to us, uh, do not be alarmed? One of the things that I've found, my sisters and brothers in crisis, we either take that information and we move forward, or we take that information and we move backward. Here was what I discovered when I looked up the word alarmed or some definitions centered around the, the word alarmed. It says a sudden fear or concern about uh, uh, something that is caused by the realization of danger or an impending setback or fear. It says a warning uh, of a, 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 a approaching danger. It also says uh, a device that is used to warn us of danger by the means of a sound or a signal, alarmed. It also says this, and I found this interesting, feeling afraid or anxious that something unpleasant or dangerous is going to happen. And so when, when we uh, look at Mark's gospel, my sisters and brothers in Christ, in, in, in the lieu of the setting that we find him in this morning, we find Jesus and his disciples are, are, are coming out of the temple. And we find this, this connection here with, with, with Mark's gospel of, of life and, and what is expected of us in life. The conditions, the characteristics of the present age, and the coming crisis in each of our lives. We're in a crisis moment right now with the pandemic. And a crisis just doesn't necessarily have to be the pandemic. A crisis can show up at any time, at any place, unexpectedly. Someone has made this declaration that uh, he or she bought this vehicle because they were having a midlife crisis. We don't have to wait, my sisters and brothers in Christ, to, to, to get to midlife to have a crisis. A crisis will show up any time. But what we see here is this connection of Mark and, and Jesus and, and Jesus helping us as believers in Christ to make it through the conditions that we find ourselves in. Mark writes this for us this morning. As Jesus was leaving the temple, one of his disciples said to him, Look, teacher, look! What massive stones! What a magnificent building! And we know that this temple, when we, we do our research, the temple was built by Herod the Great. And it was completed by his son, Herod Antipas. And if we look through the scriptures, we see these two brothers, and, and Herod Antipas was the one that Jesus faced during his last days on earth, and he called him the fox. The fox means someone who is cunning 
and deceitful, or cunning and destructive. And so in, in this uh, massive architectural structure, we find uh, Jesus replying to his boys, replying to one of his disciples. He said, do you see all these great buildings? Not one stone here will be left on another. Every one of them will be thrown down. Do you not see all these great buildings? His prediction of, of, of the building being thrown down literally came true in A.D. 70 when we found out, when we find that the entire Jerusalem, Jerusalem was destroyed, every single uh, building in Jerusalem was destroyed in A.D. 70. But Jesus says this to his fellows. Let me help you to understand these particular times. Let me help you to understand what's happening here. And he launches into what we know now is called the Olivet Discourse. In verses 3 and going all the way to the end of the chapter, to the end of chapter 13. And don't be alarmed, we're not going to preach a whole 31 verses. But he, he, he launches into what we know as the Olivet Discourse, and he says this, and it says this from Mark's Gospel. He says, as Jesus was sitting on the Mountain of Olives opposite the temple, Peter, James, and John, and, and Andrew had, had a private conversation with him. They were asking him, hey, hey, Jesus, hey, teacher, tell us what all of this means. Tell us what you mean by the, the signs of the times. Tell us what you mean by, by the building being destroyed, not one stone left on another. And Jesus says this to them. Let me share it with you. In verse 5, he says, watch out that no one deceives you. No one deceives you that in these particular times, people are going to come and they're going to try to deceive the church. And he says this, the word deceiver means someone who is uh, uh, misleading, someone who, who, who wants to, to cause you to go down the wrong path. And he says this to them, watch out and, and, and make sure that no one deceives you. We, my brothers and sisters in Christ, are called to the same uh, uh, lesson here in the 21st century, to watch out, church, to be aware that no one deceives you. And the reason that Jesus says this, the reason that God says this to us this morning is he doesn't want us to be alarmed of the current conditions. We ought not be alarmed of the pandemic. We ought not be alarmed of the happenings around us. We are living, my sisters and brothers, on this side, and things are going to happen to us. But the Bible submits to us that we ought to trust in God. He says in verse 6, that many will come claiming that I am he and will deceive people. He, he uses the word here uh, in that, that deceiving phrase. He, he uses the word imposters, that imposters are going to come. And we know that people come all the time saying that I am Jesus. I am he. But Jesus says you ought to be on guard. We ought to watch out for that. As believers in Christ Jesus, my sisters and brothers, we ought to know that there are imposters out there. Imposters are always going to show up. Someone is always going to show up claiming to be Jesus. And as the church, as the body of Christ, engaged in studying God's word, we ought to know when an imposter shows up. We ought to know when someone comes along declaring to us that they are Jesus. There is but one Jesus. He's come and he's gone home to be with God. And then he's going to return. And when he returns in the second advent, he's going to come and he's going to show himself by the power that he declares. Jesus uses this teachable moment. And he says to his disciples and to us, when you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. And he says this in, in three different fashions. He says that we're going to hear of imposters. We're going to hear uh, human calamity, cal cal calamities of wars and rumors of wars. And then he says there are going to be natural calamities. And we'll get to that. But he says to them, and I love this in verse 7, do not be alarmed. 
And I looked up the word alarm here again from the, the biblical perspective. I gave you the, 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 the Webster's dictionary perspective. From the biblical perspective, it means to, to be agitated, to cause someone to become psychologically uh, 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 detached from reality. That's the biblical definition. And so Jesus says, do not be alarmed because here is what you need to know. In verse 8, nation will rise up against nation, kingdom will rise up against kingdom, there will be earthquakes in various places and phantoms, but these are only the beginnings of birth pangs. Some version says birth pains. You remember uh, having children when the birth pains came? It wasn't the end. It was the beginning of something new. And Jesus says to the church, don't be alarmed when you see all of these things happening, earthquakes and wars and rumors of wars and human calamities. Don't be alarmed because it's the beginning of something new. We tend to look at things from a physical perspective. And God wants us to, he wants to remind us this morning through Jesus' eyes that we need to begin as the church to look at things from a, 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 a spiritual perspective. Here is our action, my sisters and brothers in Christ. This has been going on from the first century church to the 21st century church. And here is our action. Here is how we are, we are to react when we see uh, wars and when we hear of wars and rumors of wars, when we see earthquakes and we see famines in the land. Here is how we are supposed to react. Trust in God and lean not to our own understanding, but in all our ways acknowledge or submit to him and he will make our path straight. In verse 9, Jesus says this, and we didn't have necessarily verse 9 for our, our scripture reading, but verse 9, he says this, you must be on guard. And listen, you're going to be persecuted. According to Jesus, he says that we're going to face some stuff. We're going to face challenges, but we ought not be alarmed. He says that in, in verse 10, he says that the, the, the end will not yet come because the gospel must be preached to every nation until all of the preachers and all of the teachers and all of the, the lay people get out and share the good news with every nation on the face of the earth. He says the end shall not come. And look what he says in verse 11. They are going to hand you over to the authorities, but do not worry. He says, because the Holy Spirit, the advocate, will give you the line of defense. The Lord Jesus Christ says, the Spirit of Jesus, the Holy Spirit, the advocate, will tell you what to say, will tell us what to say. We ought not be alarmed in these conditions that we live in. And Jesus makes all of these promises to us today. All of these promises. If you look at verses 26 through 27, it says, at this time people will see the Son of Man. This is when he comes back in the second coming. And he says this. He, he says, in the second coming, and people will see this in the Son of Man, coming in the clouds with great power and glory. And he will send his angels, and he will gather the elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth, and to heaven. And then he says this in verse 31. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. These are promises, my sisters and brothers in Christ, that Jesus has given us that we should not be alarmed. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. If you will join with me, my sisters and brothers in Christ, as we sing hymn number uh, 714, I know whom I have believed. What a great hymn. I know whom I have believed. Amen.
Amen. That is a beautiful song. I know who I have believed in. If you will join with me, my sisters and brothers in Christ, as we affirm our faith. Our affirmation this month comes from uh, hymn number 889, and it's an old favorite of mine. It follows uh, from 1 Timothy 2, and uh, verses 5 through 6, and uh, 1 Timothy 15, 1 Timothy 3, and uh, 16. So here is uh, the leader's part. It says, this, there is one God and there is one mediator, Christ Jesus, who came as a ransom for all to whom we testify. This is a sure and worthy of all, this saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance that Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners and was manifested in the flesh, vindicated in the spirit, seen by angels, proclaimed among the nations, believed in throughout the world, taken up into glory. Great indeed is the mystery of the gospel. Amen. If you will join with me, my sisters and brothers in Christ, as we share in our gifts of tithes and offerings, I am firm believer, a firm believer, that the believers in Christ Jesus ought to be tithing. My wife and I, we've been tithing ever since we were 20, in our 20s, 27 years old, was when I came rushing to God. And from that point on, we've been tithing. No matter what our condition, working, not working, we've been tithers. And I believe this, that the Bible submits to us that tithing starts at a 10% plateau. That is the beginning. And someone has said this, do we tithe on a net or do we tithe on a gross? And I share with them, do you want a gross blessing or a net blessing? If you are a member of Trinity United Methodist Church, we absolutely receive your blessings. You are obligated to tithe, to send uh, money to support Trinity United Methodist. If you are not and you want to give to us, we will absolutely receive your blessings. You can send them here to Trinity United Methodist Church, Attention Financial Secretary at P.O. Box 155, King George, Virginia, and the zip is 22485. And also you can go online. We have an online portal for giving at www.trinitykg.org, and you'll find a place to give. Amen? Let's share in our doxology. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Uh, joys and concerns. I, I have always loved joys and concerns in, in, in service. It, it, we continue to worship even through the joys and concerns. I, I believe we can worship when we, we're giving out announcements. But joys and concerns, my sisters and brothers in Christ, is that time where we share what, with one another what God is actively doing in and through our lives. As, as United Methodists, we believe that God is active daily in our lives. Every day, God is doing something. Every minute of the hour, God is doing something in and through our lives. It's not that other denominations do not, but we're simply echoing what we believe as United Methodists, as the United Methodist Church. And joys and concerns is that time where we get to share what God is doing with us and so that we can, we can pray more intelligently for one another. See, I don't know what God is doing in and through your life unless you share it with me. And the same rule applies. Unless I share with you that God is doing something in and through me, you have no idea what God is doing. And so I want to share this joy with you. I, I am writing my papers to go before the Board of Ordained Ministry, and I'm asking all of you to pray for me. Pray that I, one, would have this calm spirit, and two, that I might be able to get my papers uh, completed and, and uploaded to a website that they're asking me to on or before December the 1st, and that way I can appear before the Board of Ordained Ministry in January or February of 2022. Pray for me. 
Pray for Karen and I as we uh, maneuver through this journey. If you have a joy or concern that you'd like to share with us, uh, hit us up here. You can send your joy or concern to us at uh, trinitykg at verizon.net, or you can send it to me personally, to my personal email at kevinelmore at va.umc.org, va.umc.org, and we will receive those absolutely. Amen? Let's pray together. Gracious God, we love you, we praise you, and give you glory. We're grateful for this time that you've given us, that we might uh, know what is happening in each other's lives, that we might hear the joys and concerns. Lord, you know what they are. We ask that you would uh, bless us as we maneuver through this side of glory, as we are all on a, a faithful journey. We are all on a, a journey that we're headed toward home, headed toward you, headed toward the kingdom. Bless us like only you can. God, we share this prayer that you taught your disciples to pray. We pray it each Sunday that we might be united, that we might be connected together as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. If you will join with me, my sisters and brothers in Christ, as we sing uh, hymn number 715. Rejoice, the Lord is King. Rejoice, the Lord is King. Amen. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Rejoice, the Lord is King. We have our closing prayer, our benediction, my sisters and brothers in Christ. And I believe this, I've been taught this all my ministry life, that a benediction is a prayer as well as a blessing of the people. So we are supposed to bless one another and then go forth into the world and serve God, give our lives as a ransom as, as we go out and serve the world in fashion that Jesus did. We are supposed to go out into the world and impact the world for the cause of Christ. But the benediction is a blessing of the people. I'm blessing myself as well, that we might go. And here is a benediction that Paul writes to the church in Rome. And it's found in the 15th chapter of the book of Rome in verses 5 and 6. And this is what he says. May the God who gives endurance and encouragement give you the same attitude of mind toward each other 
that Christ Jesus had. So that with one mind and with one voice, we may glorify the God of our Father, of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen, amen, and amen.